Hawks Hoops talking squawk. Squashing that narrative that <clears throat> the Milwaukee Bucks were robbed in favor of the Philadelphia 76ers during the 2001 NBA Eastern Conference Finals. You know, for over the past 20 some years, we then heard that the Bucks were robbed because the league didn't want to see a small market team from Milwaukee representing the East in the NBA Finals <clears throat> against the defending champion Los Angeles Lakers. Now, while it's true that nobody outside of Wisconsin wanted to see the Bucks in the Finals, that doesn't mean that they were robbed in favor of the 76ers. Because let's be honest, that series wouldn't have went seven games if we weren't tore up from injuries from top to bottom, led by league MVP and scoring champion Allen Iverson, who injured his tailbone in the previous series in that game seven against the Toronto Raptors, where he finished with 21 points in a career high 16 assists. You know, and that's another series that wouldn't have went seven games had we not been banged up. <clears throat> we had beat Toronto and Milwaukee in five games had we had a healthier team. Now, and I get it that during that time of year, no team is 100% and free of injuries. But the Sixers were suffering from tons of injuries, especially during that Eastern Conference Finals. You had Iverson playing with the bruised tailbone, amongst other nagging ailments. You had Eric Snow playing with a stress fra fracture in his foot. <clears throat> you had Aaron McKay battling minor nagging injuries. Shoot, even the Defensive Player of the Year winner, the Kimbe Mutombo. All of our top guys were battling major injuries. Because otherwise than that, we would have took Milwaukee out in five games. That would have been an easy 4-1 series victory in Philly's favor. Easy. Milwaukee wins game two in Philly. With Viruson shooting 19% from the floor. Then they win game three in Milwaukee with Viruson resting back in the hotel. <clears throat> now, had this had been today, today's stars would have probably missed that whole damn series with a broken fingernail or something. Yeah, AI came back only after missing just one game. As soon as he comes back, we win games 4, 89, and 83. And we barely escaped in game 5 with 89 to 88. Aaron McKee missing those two clutch free throws. Then Glenn Robinson missing the Potential game winner. We escape 89 to 88 and take a 3 2 series lead. Game six, one of my more favorite postseason games, especially from that playoff run. Now, even though we lost that game, AI put on a fantastic performance. 46 points, 14 for 33 from the field. We was trailing by 33 points. Came back only to lose by 10. Milwaukee ties the series. Game seven is a wrap for him. 108 to 91. 
Iverson goes for 44 points as the Sixers clinch the Eastern Conference title. This is where the banged up Iverson, our whole team is banged up. <laughs> Milwaukee, from what I know, didn't have any. They might have had nagging injuries because, as I stated, no team is injury free that time of the year, that deep into the playoffs. But Tumble in game seven finished 23 points, 19 rebounds, seven blocks. Iverson, 44 points, seven assists, six rebounds, two steals, played 44 minutes. It was George Carl that started this nonsense about the Bucks being robbed in favor of the Sixers. Just sore loser mentality. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Just sore loser mentality. Y'all wouldn't have even went seven games if the Sixers weren't so banged up. Like I said, that would have been a five-game series. You would have won four games to one. So... This bullshit narrative has been spread a lot over the past few years because now you got these remedial imbeciles on there. Allen Iverson was overrated rhetoric, but they're only going off of what they actually seen instead of how things really played out. Just ignoring the fact that the league had it out for the answer, which led to them chiseling Philly out of regular season wins, which would result in the Sixers having low playoff seedings, which would lead to naturally early postseason exits as that bias and suspect officiating continued against the Sixers during the playoffs. <laughs> But them numbskulls don't want to tell you that. They just go by, oh, AI was overrated. He only got past the second round that one time. That's all they go by. But that's what happens when you have no real knowledge of the game and the mechanics and the dynamics of how things play out. But I've been meaning to do this video for some time now. You know, I've been meaning to do it for some time because not too long ago, some clown on social media was on his AI3 is overrated rampage. It stated how the Sixers were favored and over the Bucks in 2001 because the league didn't want to see. <clears throat> a small market team and that by AI being the reigning MVP and a marquee player, that that would draw way more ratings, which again is true. That doesn't mean that the Sixers won due to any unfair officiating or anything. And then another thing, they love to bring up Scott Williams being suspended. Yeah, we get Scott Williams was a three-time champion on that first Chicago Bulls 3P. We get that. But people were acting like Scott Williams, who at the time was in the twilight of his career, they act like Scott Williams was going to really make a difference. <laughs> that That's the funny part that cracks me up. Scott Williams, who at the time was 33 years old, and playing in his 11th NBA season. Scott Williams, who that season only averaged six points a game and five rebounds in less than 20 minutes a game. Right. Scott Williams, who during that playoff run averaged just under eight points, 7.2 rebounds and 22 minutes a game. <clears throat> Sure, on a team with Ray Allen, 
a future Hall of Famer. Sam Cassell, who had won two championships with the Clutch City Houston Rockets a few years earlier. Glenn Big Dog Robinson, who was in the prime of his career. Plus great role players like Tim Thomas. Jason Caffey, another former Chicago Bulls champion. Gritty players like Darvin Ham, Lindsey Hunter. Yeah, with all those players, yeah, Scott Williams was going to make the difference in y'all losing game seven. Right. By 17 points. <clears throat> People crack me up with that. And that's no disrespect to Scott Williams, who is a former Sixer, spent six seasons with the 76ers, was AI's team in his first two seasons and some change in Philly. But people crack me up. They make up all types of bullshit to fit a narrative. A lot of these younger fans don't like Iris, and most of them are mad because they missed out on his career because they were too young. But hey, that's why you have YouTube videos. You go on in and pull up all the AI's best games. Anybody with a brain that knows anything about the game of basketball is going to tell you that, if anything, Allen Iris is underrated. And if you see my video on the raw deal of Allen Iverson's career, along with my most recent video about AI's best chance to win a championship with the 76ers, you'll see that he got a raw deal from the league and that he should have way more playoff success and possibly a championship ring. But I just had to squash that narrative about the Bucks being robbed when they need to be thanking the Sixers injuries for that series even going seven games. And that's no disrespect to that Bucks team because that was a pretty good Milwaukee team. Sure, they don't have nothing on the Giannis Antetokounmpo Bucks teams of the past few years. They don't have nothing on the Kareem and Oscar Robinson, Bobby Dandridge Bucks teams of the early to mid 1970s. And hell, they're not even on par with the Marcus Johnson, Sidney Moncrief, Bob Lanier, Jr. Bridgman, Don Nelson coach, Milwaukee Bucks teams of the 1980s. But they would be in that fourth tier of Bucks teams. But like I said, just had to squash that narrative. That Sixers team wins 4-1 if we weren't so banged up. And even with a banged up Sixer team, Iris is still had one of the best, probably the best playoff series of his NBA career. Which is sad because he should have way more playoff success. Iris has averaged 30.5 points, just under five assists, just under, I mean, I'm sorry, 30.5 points, just under seven assists, just under five rebounds, two steals, and played 46 minutes a game in that series. This is with a busted tailbone amongst all the other nagging injuries and only played in six of the seven games. So one of those bucks... Out of one of those Bucks three wins came with AI resting back in the hotel in Milwaukee. So had to squash that narrative. Anyway, this was Hawks Hoops Talking Squawk. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more content. Hawk out.